good afternoon and welcome to Midday Live with me, AC Benewa Oto. The headlines now. As Ghana joins the world to observe AIDS Day, we will explore challenges preventing people from knowing their HIV status. Clients, customers and partners of Media General assured of value for money in their business with the company in 2019. And in international news, former U.S. President George Bush has died at the age of 94. Details of these stories and more coming up in the next one hour. Let's move on to our very first story. And one month after the Ministry of Transport taxed the governing board of the Ghana Maritime Authority to investigate allegations of financial misappropriation against the Director General of the Authority, the board is yet to submit its report. An instruction to the board on October 29 failed to give them terms of reference and timelines within, the board, uh, within which the board uh, must submit its report. He fought back fiercely, dismissing all allegations made against him in a leaked document from his own office. The board has approved the provided management. See that the cost of acquiring food services from that institution is value for money. They are allowed to do that. The leaks coupled with a response from the Maritime Authority ball sparked outrage from the public. They are out there talking rubbish. One by one, the Director General of the Maritime Authority shot down what he described as wicked lies against his person. We will not yield to people who want to extort. I will not yield. The Transport Ministry obviously worried about the public uproar quickly issued a statement for the board to investigate its director general without a timeline and terms of reference. The same board that gave approval for the issues he is alleged to have been indulged in. Mind-boggling also was the press conference the director general organized to dispel the allegations, a presser that had the board chairman in attendance. A month on, it is unclear when the report will be presented to the minister and made available to the public. The transport minister recently at a public event will not answer questions on the investigations but hinted the report will definitely be presented by the board. Sources within the board say investigations are still ongoing. Yes, and Chinin Kasana Jose order. But once in a while, order, you have to roll your sleeves and tell people order. In other news, two small-scale miners have been handed over to the police for falsifying the Environmental Protection Agency documents. The miners are among 423 others who have been vetted by Inter-Ministerial Committee on Illegal Mining. Saloma Menya has more in the following report. The whole exercise uh, was not to victimize people or actually look for scapegoats. Ignorance is not an excuse of the law. Um, but with this, I wouldn't even say it's an ignorant thing. That I mean, for you sitting down and actually putting a receipt together um, that you've paid your EPA uh, for, for your EPA permit to outwit the system uh, means that this, uh, the two elements of crime, which is the, um, the mental and the active one, which is mens rea and then act actus reus. So but that's there. So uh, we've had actually handed them over to the police. Uh, the police would deal with it. They are the agencies uh, that are mandated to do that. The announcement of the ban lies with them because we started the process on the 3rd of September. Um, we were supposed to take a week, but it took us five weeks. We're on th uh, phase three of the exercise. As we speak, we're doing things in Paripasu, uh, i.e. concurrently things happening all, all over. I mean, we have the excavator team out there. We have the team out there 
mapping our concessions for the community mining scheme and all that. So we have 150 um, drone pilots in Esuchari being trained, um, who were, I mean, they are graduates from NAPCO and all that. Yes, they want the president to come and announce the lifting of the ban, but they are the ones who are going to empower the president to do that because the checking the list, um, the checking the boxes in the roadmap lies with them. For example, we started this and whilst you're going, people are not coming forth with the information. I'm not saying all of them, because if I cannot imagine where you've given, from the 3rd of September, you've come in at the first stage, you've been given documentation, you've been given a checklist of the, um, as to the outstanding um, documentations that you need to provide. If you really want to go back to mine, I would actually carry out these exercises just with the speed of light. But then we're here we are in November. Next week is December and they still cannot um, do it. Is it a case where some of the agencies are weaker, uh, which is part of our mandate to strengthen them? Or is it a case where the person um, is ignorant about certain things, then we'll be here to help them uh, through education and all that. And so lifting of the ban, um, I, th I believe the power lies with them now to actually collaborate with us so that we do the right thing and submit a proper report to the president. Then he can be in a position to announce the lifting of the ban. And to some good news, the electricity company is to install lighting arresters across the country to avert power outages. The lighting arresters will enable the ECG repair faults without necessarily shutting down their system. The dropout lighting arresters are expected to replace some worn-out cables which trigger power outages. It will also prevent outages whenever there is thunder and lightning during rainfall. The system is to also control surge in power without affecting gadgets of customers. The acting director of engineering at the electricity company of Ghana, engineer Bernard P. Bansa, was confident this will address the numerous power problems. These devices, if thunder strikes and then they get damaged, we don't need to put the power off now in order to restore the protective equipment into network. It means that zero outage for the places that this equipment will be uh, deployed. Head of Operations and Maintenance at ECG, Engineer Tete Okai, also underscored the relevance of procuring this equipment to make ECG competitive. There have been different ideas on how to do the air thing so that you not use a copper wire. And then when, when people steal their wires like that, and then you have lightning strikes, you tend to destroy your equipment. That's cost. But with the different ideas, we come up with different things. You use aluminium or steel wires, etc. To further consider the effectiveness of the dropout lightning arresters, engineers at the ECG organized a stakeholder forum on the equipment. Discussions focused primarily on using the arresters as a sustainable engineering tool to promote national development. As the politics now, and the all, all presidential hopefuls of the NDC after a current meeting last night are set to issue a communique regarding an amount of 400,000 being charged as filing fee uh, by the party. Information reaching TV3 indicates more than 90% of the 12 uh, presidential hopefuls were present at the meeting with former President Mahama, who is currently out uh, of the country. Joining them via video conference, the aspirants were uh, told have initiated moves to petition the Council of Elders to reconsider the amount being charged. Let's uh, discuss some issues uh, in this particular uh, development. And we have been joined in the studio by a delegate who is also a former uh, presidential aspirant for the Boko Central Constituency, uh, parliamentary aspirant, I beg your pardon, uh, on the ticket of the uh, NDC, Al Haji Ibrahim Dori Bakomi. He joins me in the studio now. Good afternoon. Alhaji Bakomi, thanks for joining us. <laughs> yeah, good afternoon, and then good afternoon to our cherished uh, viewers and to my constituency, Boko Central, uh, to be specific. Well, so let's get to the matter. Before, before we look at uh, the meeting held yesterday, uh, we want to find out uh, what do you make of the amount being charged you know, uh, by presidential uh, hopefuls, the filing fees? 
Thank you very much. First of all, if uh, going by what the National Executive Committee presented to us uh, as a political party, where uh, aspirants are expected to pick up a form of uh, 20,000 Ghana cities and then subsequently uh, organize themselves to pay a whooping amount of 400,000 Ghana cities as a filing fee. Personally, I think it is on the higher side because we are looking at a system where there must be some level playing ground for almost every individual who wants to aspire to lead, not just the NDC, but the country as a whole. And so democracy, as we are all seeing it, shouldn't be so much of money. That is a very big concern. And honestly, uh, if you look at what happened yesterday, following the announcement of the whooping amount of 400,000 Ghana cities that went into the air, and then the crunch meeting held by the uh, 11 other aspirants, one can come to the conclusion that indeed all is not well within the NDC as far as this very amount is concerned and that there must be some other look at it going we, forward. We would get into uh, the meeting shortly, but before then, uh, are you, do you intend uh, contesting? Yeah, I will be contesting. Uh, well, so um, then again, this is really high for you, clearly, as the amount uh, is too high, as you have said. But um, is the NDC, would you say that the NDC uh, is a party for only the rich looking at, you know, the, 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 the amount being charged? That is the more reason why we are all calling on the National Executive Committee to take a second look at the way things are going. First of all, if you look at the way things are, we expected the National Executive Committee, considering the systems that we have put in place, to have a mechanism whereby the party will be seen not just a party being run by individuals, but a mechanism of raising funds to help the political party going forward. 400,000 Ghana cities is no mean an amount, and that we must come to a conclusion. And then looking at the way the NDC is background and then is ethics being a social uh, democratic party, mm -hmm. we must do things within a leverage whereby things should not go out of bound. And for me, it is a very worrying situation. And then the timelines even given, how do you expect an aspirant to pick up a form within two days, use 10 days to move throughout the country, 275 constituencies and get back file and then pay that whooping amount. And for me, it is a very worrying situation for almost all the aspirants. But some, some people will argue that once you are ready, you want to you know, contest, then you should be uh, prepared for some of these things. That is true. We are not arguing that is not the case. No one is going to contest without paying any amount. But 400,000 Ghana cities, as I'm talking to you, it is so much an amount. And you see, already there is the perception. There is a perception that the NDC left power based on the issues of corruption. Now, how do you expect people who want to aspire to lead the party and then subsequently, if they get them not lead the country, be able to raise this whooping amount of money at this material moment where the MPP have taken the country into an economic hardship system? So we are actually appealing to the National Executive Committee to take a second look at the filing fee and then allow a level playing ground for almost all the aspirants to be able to do that. Was it a good move uh, for the uh, presidential aspirants, you know, uh, to uh, have that meeting yesterday? Yeah, yesterday they actually held the meeting and I'm reliably informed anytime soon the communique will be made public to the media and whatever is contained in whatever they Was it agreed, a good move? I think it's a good move because they must also be heard. The National Executive Committee took a decision without them being heard. And I think this is the right time for them to also show up and then let them understand these are what they think should be done going forward. And I think that is the best we can go. NDC, now our major concern is about 2020 elections. And we must not allow the systems that are going to go through the various electoral processes of getting our presidential, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, our presidential candidate, divided the party. We must do things to consolidate each and every individual who is a stakeholder in the party. Going forward, whoever emerges as a winner would actually be looking for the support of the other candidates. And so we must not do things to get people out, 
but we must do things to consolidate each and every individual who is interested in contesting for this particular presidential what do you call it uh, as a, a, a presidential uh, 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 candidacy. Thanks so much uh, for your time here with us in the studio. We are so grateful to you for touching on these uh, issues. We, I think we'll have to uh, bring you more on this particular development when the communique is out. Uh, this is still Midday Live and I have been speaking uh, with Alhaji Ibrahim Dori uh, Bakomi and he is a former parliamentary uh, aspirant for the Boko Central constituency on the ticket of the NDC. Let's do other stories and Ghana today joined the rest of the world to mark AIDS Day on the theme, Know Your Status. UNAIDS reports indicate 9.4 million people across the world are unaware they are HIV positive. In the following report, we take a look at some challenges preventing people from knowing their status. December 1 is observed as World AIDS Day. It's an awareness creation day to show solidarity towards people who are living with AIDS and also remember those who died of the disease. According to UNAIDS, 9.4 million people across the world are unaware they are HIV positive. In Ghana, according to the Ghana AIDS Commission, there is an alarming rate of new infections from the youth. So what are the reasons preventing people from getting tested? Persons who have protected sex think it is enough to safeguard them. But as health experts warn, HIV can be spread through infected blood transfusion, sharing the same needles or strange. Others also shy away from testing because of stigma, as some will think they already have the disease. This is a concern for the Greater Accra Regional Chairman of NAPLAS, Raymond Aholu. When you are HIV positive, B, you stigmatize self stigmatization. You stigmatize yourself first. Then <laughs> your inner spirit is coming down. Your, you, you, you begin to be thinking, you begin to be frustrating. Then you see that uh, a lot of implication come to come across and you will be dying gradually. That's how it is. But when you meet and you encourage, we encourage our people, or oh, when you have HIV, that is not the end of your life. You can marry, it, you can work, you can do this, you can do that. Chances of people getting infected with AIDS also depend on the sexual history of one's partner. People don't get themselves tested for HIV thinking that they have stayed monogamous and thus safe. As Ghana joins the rest of the world to mark World AIDS Day, persons living with HIV are calling for financial support to embark on education activities to halt the alarming trend of new infections. To educate the public, to educate our people, is no more effective as we do first. At first, there is support from various mother organization like Ghana East Commission, NACP, that we used to have meeting once in the month to organize our people and educate them. But now there is no money, there is no support coming from anywhere for such meetings. Well, still on uh, HIV-related issues, and every man dreads contracting sexually transmitted infections, especially HIV. Yet many shy uh, to walk into shops to buy condoms, one of the safest means to stay protected. As Ghana joins the rest of the world to mark AIDS Day, Beatrice Spielgabra attempts to understand the frustrations men go through to buy condoms. The APC principle has over the years featured prominently in HIV prevention campaigns by the Ghana AIDS Commission. The principle highlights abstinence from sex, being faithful to a partner, and condom use. There is widespread apprehension in buying condoms ostensibly because sex is usually not spoken about in most cultures in Ghana. For those who are not bold to buy from pharmacy shops, they send children with a product name written for purchase. Others hang around pharmacy shops until the counter is empty before sneaking in to buy. Even for the bored ones, they prefer a more convenient and easily accessible means of patronizing condoms. Kwabina Minka is a taxi driver who appreciates the use of condoms, but he is shy to buy one when in need. 
He tells us when he gathers the courage to visit a pharmacy shop. He speaks undertone to avoid the prying ears of other patrons in the shop. Sometimes I feel shy to tell the pharmacist I want to buy a condom, so I usually whisper. The moment to be to one hour, but on an enemy panel, but Jenny said, Bibina de Quaque, Diana Fericacra, this other be also one rent with a condom. Oh, say a Yariaba, a man so bohoka. Him as a born Yarena Sutti. I don't feel shy at all because of the prevalence of sexually transmitted infections. It's best to protect ourselves by using a condom. Kenneth Konedu is a pharmacist who admits some men shy away from buying condoms. I would say condoms should be readily available, even at the bus terminals. Before you want to pick a bus, embark or even disembark, it should, there should be a provision whereby you can easily reach out for a condom. Ashanti region is leading in HIV with a 3.2 prevalence rate. Currently, there are calls for the Ghana AIDS Commission and other stakeholders to devise a more purchase-friendly approach in the sale of condoms. Technical coordinator at the Commission, Olivia Graham, attributed the problem partly to cultural inhibitions. For some people, and especially the youth, and they find it very difficult going to uh, these places to buy condoms because they feel um, people will tag them as being bad mm. or something. So they don't like going to the pharmacy shops to buy condoms. The commission has, however, piloted a condom vending machine, which should be rolled out nationwide. But until the vending machine's service is successfully rolled out, and condoms sold at more untraditional outlets. Do not be shy to buy your condom to help in HIV prevention. Well, that's a good one over there, the use of condoms. Let's do, uh, still stay on uh, health. And the Ghana Coalition of NGOs in Health is calling for prompt action to control and correct Ghana's poor emergency response system. Although the NGO said Ghana Health Services, does, uh, the GHS, is beginning to be more assertive and resilient, it notes that the GHS is under-resourced and so they get frustrated during medical emergencies, thus flooding and disasters. The Coalition of NGOs in health also raised concerns about the health workforce in Ghana. According to the NGO, uh, the health workforce is, however, challenged with shortages, imbalanced health team, inequitable distribution, and unfavorable working conditions, which and compulsory uh, adequate compensations, limited non financial incentives, and workplace safety. Well, let's look at this issue. We'll also be uh, looking at the HIV uh, prevalence rates in the country. And we have Dr. Gabriel Benaku, and he is the national chairman, Ghana Coalition of NGOs in Health. And he joins me in the studio now. Good afternoon, doctor. It's yeah. been a while, yes, doctor. How are you doing? Thank you so much. Good to know. So uh, you have raised a number of uh, concerns. Key and notable amongst them is a human resource for a country profile. What exactly are these concerns for? Thank you. Um, before I go ahead, I would like to tell all Ghanaians uh, everywhere that get tested for HIV and AIDS. And if you are positive, you know how to manage it. There's hope. And if you are negative, you are already aware. And the counselor will give you some strategies to live healthy. And so I encourage everybody, especially the Coalition of NGO and Health members across the 10 regions. The human resource uh, concerns that you have raised. Yes, um, we have been struggling with this for a very long time, over 30 years. Ghana is still struggling, even though we have adequate human resource training. So you ask yourself, why we have trained them and we are not using them. Let me give you a typical example. I'm, I'm sure you have heard about the Cuban doctor, the Cuban health workers. Why should Cuba 
train health professionals, use them adequately, and the rest, they sell to the rest of the world. One, to promote health tourism. And two, to learn from what is happening across the world and use that to strengthen their health system. So they become much more robust. Why is it that Ghana, we have trained so many medical doctors and we cannot employ them. We cannot use them and people have to buy them out. And we are still struggling with equity. We are violating the constitutional provision in this country. So I'm challenging the politicians. I'm challenging all people who matter in the health sector that the only indelible mark they can leave in their political career is to make sure that we have adequate human resource distribution in this country. You can, our research reveals that you, we have more than 50 districts that they don't have resident medical doctor. Resident medical doctor with the team around to help discharge their duties as the profession dictates. That is very dangerous for a country like Ghana. Even now we have over 159 uh, districts in Ghana. Mm -hmm. That tells you a lot. 150, uh, 259 districts. And I even know that they have already sent another addendum for more districts to be created. So why are we not having at least three doctors per district in Ghana? That is a violation to our constitution. No politician can justify this. You, the you, second point mm -hmm. is critically, doctors work with nurses. They work with anesthetists. They work with bioscientists. If you don't have these people, it's a teamwork. They are supposed to do their part for the doctor to take a decision or to make adequate judgment about how to treat a client. We are violating all this in, in Ghana. You have been, you, you, you are mostly in the rural areas yes. and you have identified some of these things. So yes. 50 districts and, you know, they over, do not, over yes. 50 districts yes. and they do not have, you know, uh, medical doctors. Yes. What, what, what are some of the uh, implications, you know, what are some of the issues in those areas regarding healthcare delivery? What it just simply means is that people are self-medicating. Okay. What it simply means is that People are frustrated in the healthcare delivery. What it just simply means is that we are underutilizing the infrastructure we already put in place there. And that is why we see an increase in non communicable diseases diabetes, cancer, so many depressional conditions. It's because our health system is not friendly. It's, not our, it's because our health system is not well resourced okay. to provide that holistic package to the people. So people begin to look for quality of care and they innovate. They create and something. And yes. then okay. once they provide that, they take medicine or drugs that are over or under those. And that has also has another effect. You, 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 you have raised lots of uh, concerns. Um, one also is the issue of um, uh, NHIA, and you want Parliament to amend uh, that act. Why is this crucial? Ghana is a member of the United Nations, and our president have signed or ratified to support the universal health care coverage or universal health care. So our president should be talking of uh, 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 making sure that everybody receive health care appropriately. Now, the national health insurance is one of the strategies for the government of Ghana to use to be able to, to, to get everybody to get treatment or access to health services. But we have either consciously or by any means mm -hmm still try to use some administrative procedures to create problem to affect universal health care coverage. One, the national health insurance should be independent. Okay. Funded by the state. Period. We think that it is high time we stop politicizing.
Administration of the National Health Insurance by all political parties who were in government since uh, former President Kufuor time. You know the reason why. The NHI money is put into a fund, and the Minister of Finance use his discretion as and when he think there's funding to now give that money back to the national health for, so that they can also pay their service provider. That process over the years has delayed payment, payment for, for service providers. And once service providers' payments are delayed, they will add more cost, a hidden cost to the drugs or services they provide. So you see that the ordinary Ghanaians keep on suffering by paying more for what they are asking for. And because they are already insured, they want her uh, quality of care. So you see that administratively, we have created a program for the national health insurance so that they keep on delaying in payments to their service providers. And we, the client, will suffer because we will be paying additional money. So we are just saying that parliamentary select committee, I remember sure. some three months ago, I met the chairman of the select committee. I said, please. This is the time to use your leadership to change the law so that they have adequate funding. I know of a lot of health institutions who are independent elsewhere, and they are able to determine how much they can use to pay their service okay. provider and invest the rest so that they can get more to make their system very resilient and very strong. Dr. Uh, Gabriel Benaku, thanks so much for joining us. Thank this you, too. You raised lots of issues yes. um, with regarding HIV, uh, emergency preparedness and all that. Yes. Probably we'll look at uh, those Thank issues. Thank you. Also yeah, we are, we are more Always than available. willing to, to thanks contribute. Thanks so much. And I have been speaking with Dr. Gabriel Benaku, and he is the National Chair Coalition of NGOs in Health, looking at the state of our health system. We take a break here. Stay with us. More news coming up. Clients, customers and partners of Media General have been promised value for their money uh, money in their business with the company in 2019. Managers of Media Mughal says innovation and good customer service will be deep in to ensure business growth. Media General gathered customers and corporate Ghana at a screening ceremony to present to them its compelling content and packages for 2019. The night also afforded the opportunity for Media General to celebrate the long-lasting relationship with its customers and to create new ones. Head of Marketing at Media General, Daniel Amate, assured clients of value for money in their investment. It's been a very long-term relationship we've had and we want to let them have more value for what they've already been spending with us. Media General is also reintroducing some of its reality shows like Mentor, Music Music and Home Sweet Home. We are trying to be very innovative. And so for all this program that we are bringing up, we are going to do activations to tie them with so that our customers and our partners enjoy from their partnership. Some clients of Media General were full of praise for Media General for upholding professionalism in their business dealings. We've been working with TV3 for the past eight years. It's been an interesting journey. Um, when we work with them, we're able to reach our target and then we're able to get visibility for our brands. We believe we share a lot of uh, values in common. Quality, um, good customer service, um, good delivery. These are values and qualities that we believe the GTV brand holds and TV3 uh, exhibit such qualities. I'm playing with TV3 only this year, 2018. Uh, what I'm uh, really experiencing with you is that you have, um, you excite and delight your customer throughout uncompromising quality of uh, services. This is really uh, amazing, really professional. Some also encourage Media General to continue being innovative. 2019, I expect that TV3 is going to keep on supporting me. I'm with a company that delivers the number one coldest snack, Fan Yogo, and we are sure we have a lot of nice things for our consumers in 2019. So we know that through TV3, we are going to reach out to our consumers and bring them all the excitement of Fan Yogo. Looking at your program for the rest of the for uh, 2019, we we've just realized that we did a good partnering with you. So that is basically why we want to partner with TV3. Looking at the viewership, TV3 has the highest viewership. Per the Geopool uh, report, 
So we think we have to work with the best media house in Ghana, and that's why we are doing business with TV3. 2019 obviously promises to be a good year for Media General and her business partners. Imani Africa has proposed to government uh, to immediately review operations of the Public Procurement Authority or risk losing sums of money through corruption. Its founder, Franklin Kujo, alleged officers at the authority inflate the cost of projects to milk the state. The founder of Imani Africa was making a presentation at an Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana Forum. Franklin Kujia praised government's measures at formalizing the economy and expanding the tax net. The promotion of good governance was key for Imani, but was worried the right information bill had still not been passed. Of a major concern to Imani Africa was how government was losing huge sums of money through procurement. Actually now, intending to increase the treasures of the various approving authorities is shocking. First of all, you all know that we don't have enough procurement experts in this town. Most of them are purchasing and supply people who are passing off as procurement experts. Never mind, most of what is procured really is toilets, windows, doors, and all of that. So maybe you don't mind. But the levels of approval, the thresholds, are excruciatingly high. And as I told the finance minister about three or four weeks ago in Koforidia, if you approve this, this country will literally go down its knees. He also asked government to review the National Health Insurance Scheme to absorb more subscribers. President of the Institute of Chartered Accountant Ghana, Professor Adon Frim Paul, implored government to ensure that its budget targets are achieved. Bringing district action against habitual defaulting taxpayers to retrieve unpaid taxes, speeding up the implementation of various automated systems such as the fiscal electronic device, which will enhance the effective collection of VAT and exercise tax stamp policy to reduce human involvement in tax administration. The forum was to discuss prospects in a 2019 budget statement presented to Parliament by the Minister of Finance, Ken Oforiata. The NPP, after taking office in January 2017, said the previous NDC administration left behind a raised total in 7 billion Ghana cities that was unaccounted for. But a former Minister of Finance, Seth Tekbe, has indicated the current government has refused to co coincide with the amount uh, that was accounted for. Cited the MPP's own budget to show that there was information on the said areas. The budget guideline is there and you can see why it was done. If I was hiding something, mind you, the elections took place December 7. I was in the ministry for a whole month. If I was hiding something as big as 7 billion, you know, why would I leave it in a file, you know, with a list? As I said, that. The, the document, the list was provided to the Auditor General, so take the Auditor General's report. And I'm saying that if that list was provided, then the budget guideline is saying clearly, you know, that they were not a race, that they were a shift to accrual accounting under the gift list. The former finance minister was of the view government rather had not paid the contractors. They have to concede first, but they are not conceding, even though they've done all those obsess obsessive and other things. And as I said, if you paid something in 2017, how come you are now making provision two billion to pay it? The arrears, or were all those arrears accumulated in 2017, 2018? And that would be huge. Managing Director of RMG, William Cote, has called for cheaper sources of credit for farmers in the country to enable them expand. Speaking at an agri-business forum organized by CIMG, he said challenges such as low mechanization, poor roads, low inputs, amongst others, affect farmers' yield. The International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD, and United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, say in 2013, smallholders formed about 80% of all farmers in Ghana and contribute up to 90% of food production. However, Ghana's efforts to move towards a market-oriented economy are hampered by ineffective, by ineffective policies, weak institutions, and inadequate infrastructure. Speaking at the CIMG program on the theme, Getting It Right with Agribusiness, the Supply Chain Management Factor, 
Managing Director of Agribusiness firm RMG, William Cote, urged financial institutions to grant loans to farmers who are ready to produce. I've engaged banks, but somehow, some way, some of them are getting the understanding. But then they say, Mr. Central Bank says you should have uh, collateral 120% of the money that you need. I should put 2.2 million in your bank and give, give me 2 million. So why don't I use my 2.2 million? Most of them don't even have uh, agricultural experts. They are not even ready to go to the field to even see that if two years ago a farmer was doing three tons and now he's doing seven or eight tons, even at the lowest slump in price, he's, he will still make e break even or make profit <coughs> to be able to repay the a facility back. William Cote added farmers in Ghana need easy access to technology and good roads to enable them meet the increasing demand on the local market. The key is to have infrastructure. You need to reduce the cost of production of the farmer, transportation, accessibility to the inputs, the markets. Those things are key in making sure that the, farmer, the farmer's production cost is down, but more importantly that he has access to technology technology that will lead him to increase his productivity and with productivity then they can make more money and be able to continue to invest in their business. The forum, which brought together large holder farmers across the country, was aimed at discovering how dynamic the agriculture sector is and its relevance as a business hub. And that's it for business. We have sports coming up. Stay with us. And Ghanaian rapper and hip-hop sensation Denin Edem Hotel, popularly known as Edem, says creating music in other Ghanaian dialects apart from it is difficult for him. Edem, who has released the controversial uh, Hitoto song, says he would try, have tried other dialects if he were fluent in them. Edem burst into the Ghanaian music scene uh, with the likes of Sakodie and Kual Kesi. Popular for singing in his native ever language and English, the Volta-born talented artist Adam has blessed the Ghanaian music scenes with a lot of masterpieces. Having been on a low-key throughout last year, the rapper Adam has been very active this year with eight songs, a fear for, among others, making airwaves. In an interview with TV3's Nayo Kolai, Adam explained why Ewe and English dominates the languages chosen for his song. You have to be conversant with the language, mm. then you can be able to sing. Okay. If you are not conversant, maybe you can get a phrase that sounds nice, like fearful. I just asked my manager, like, I want to say something, can you give me a chi word? If I get a word like that, or I can speak the language, I mean, creating with it comes, comes very easy too. Touching on his controversial new banger Etoto, he said it is a motivational song and not the profane connotation people are attaching to it. So for purposes of getting people's attention, you have to make sure your title is strategic. Words get attention, so we have to choose a word that to get everybody's attention. And to some good news for us here at TV3, TV3's Ghana's Most Beautiful has been adjudged the Outstanding uh, Women Pageant of the Year at the median edition of the Outstanding Women's Award. Media General's Wendy Lai also picked up Outstanding Woman TV host for the night. The mating edition of Outstanding Women's Award saw an impressive turn-up. The gathering was made up of passionate women from all walks of life, from health, agriculture, entertainment, entrepreneurship and more. The award seeks to celebrate women who have made significant contribution to their community through the exceptional leadership and sustained dedication to humanity. In recognition and appreciation of your strength, dedication, devotion, and contribution to our motherland Ghana, 
we hail you. Indeed, you are an outstanding woman and a gift to humanity and an example for all. Congratulations. The all female group Lipstick Band treated audience to some live band music. <laughs> Twenty-five awards, including honoring awards, were given out to some deserving individuals and corporate organizations in Ghana. TV3's Ghana's Most Beautiful picked up Outstanding Woman Pageant Award. 2015 Ghana's Most Beautiful Queen Abigail Basiara Benti also walked away with Outstanding Woman Beauty Queen. Outstanding Woman in Health went to first runner-up for 2017 Ghana's Most Beautiful Baba Butri for her eminent contribution towards the awareness of mental health care in Ghana. The winner is Wendy Larry. With the highest level of professionalism in her reportage, TV3's Wendy Lai was a judged outstanding woman TV host. I'm on it. It's overwhelming. And long and short, it's an honor. There have been so many award events out there, but beauty queens have never been recognized. So when I heard that we were about to be um, celebrated and honored, I was glad. Fortunately, I was nominated, and glory be to God, we have won it overall beauty queen of the year. And I'm I'm grateful to God. Uh, we are pleased and will continue to do our best. Uh, I think Ghana's Most Beautiful has come to stay and will continue to change the life of the young ladies so they can also impact into the children in their communities at large and then to affect the country's development. <laughs> And we say congratulations to all the award winners. That's it for Midday Live. Thanks so much for watching. My name is AC Binewanyani. Do enjoy the rest of our programs. Have a good afternoon.